Florida to visit my brother. And while here, I am building my nephews a set of bunk beds. The bunk beds include, as you can see, a rock climbing wall, individual shelves for the lower and top bunks, and then plenty of drawer storage along the bottom. If you would like to see how I did it, then stay tuned. Yeah. I'm very high. You are so high. You can't kiss me. What if I can? What if I can? I don't make it out to Florida as often as I would like, so when making the trip with my parents to see the newest addition to the family, I made sure my bags were stuffed with gifts to try and win me that best aunt title. My, my oldest nephew was pleased, but I got plenty of funny looks from TSA. So I actually did the design for the bed on the plane ride over so that as soon as my boots hit the ground, we could jump in and start building. If you have time, it is a tremendous time saver to paint all of your boards before you start building. I was limited to two days, so after one side got two coats and was dry enough to touch, I started cutting. Now I do have a set of plans, link for you down below if you're interested, which comes with not only a material shopping list, but also a full cut list. This also saves a great amount of time as I could make all of the cuts needed at the same time for the boards that make up the two main bed frames and the two side assemblies that connect the beds. We had a full family operation going on. After I made the cuts needed, I pulled out my Armor Tool self-adjusting jig and showed my dad how to drill in pocket holes in the needed boards. While he continued to drill pocket holes, I continued working down my cut list to get boards to their needed length. My brother would gather up the finished boards that needed to be hauled inside, and my mom would be feeding me new boards that needed cuts. I do recommend doing all of the assembly work in the final location the bed will be. Now, I know you guys are used to seeing me in my shop where I have things pretty set up, but remember that the key to being a maker or a builder is being resourceful, not having all of the things. Before going in to start assembling, I wanted to cut all the 20 something slats needed for the beds. And a stop block on the modder saw is the way to make that go quick. So I improvised. I used a Bessie quick clamp to attach a board to the underside of the welding table I was using as a stand. So that then I could clamp another board to the top side right where I needed my stop block to be placed. And now I'm able to lay my new board down, slide it down until it runs into the stop and then make my cut without measuring. We once again got into a cute family groove where dad would feed me new boards and my mom would take the cut ones while my brother moved in the piles. All right, let's move in and start assembling. Let me introduce you to the most adorable apprentice I've come across. Then we're gonna use the drill. Yeah, and it's gonna be very loud. Not that loud. I am starting with a frame for the bunk beds, and since Noah was so interested in being a part of anything I was doing, I tried to include him. He loved just sitting and watching, but he also loved being tasked with things like getting screws or pushing on the drill. By the way, if a whole box of screws go missing, check the local dump truck near you. Before setting that aside, I glued and then screwed on a ledge that the slats will later rest on top of. Since this is an inside project, I used Type On Original for the majority of connections. All right, setting that aside so that we can build the two side assemblies. This was going to require multiple hands, so I brought in some saw horses just to keep my folks up off the ground. We first attached some blocks that will act as ledges for the bed frames to rest on. Then moving up to the top of the sides, we also attach what will later be the header and footer of the top bunk frame. Another tip is to use a countersink before driving in the screws. This not only creates a pilot hole to prevent cracking, but also creates a divot in the wood for the head of the screw to sit below the surface. While my mom helped hold things, my dad would countersink, then I would follow him with screws. After repeating to make another side, I was ready to start attaching things together. If you have two people to hold the sides, then it's really as simple as placing the bottom bunk right on top of the ledge blocks put into place earlier. So putting the frame together, I used wood glue, but when attaching the frame to the sides, I'm only using screws. And this is so it can be disassembled and moved in the future. Once it was attached on the four legs, we dropped in the slats, just spacing them apart by eye. And while my brother went through to countersink, I drove in the screws. Next, we moved to the top and attached the two remaining members to complete the bed frame, and then dropped in the slats up there as well. Then the last thing we were able to do that night was attach the second portion of the four legs. 
We could set these in place, make sure that they were flush, hold them using Bessie clamps, and then attach them using screws. And it was so cute how all Noah wanted to do was go look at his new bed. I'm going to my new bed. You want to go look at your new bed? Yeah. Okay. I want to go in. You want to go home with me in the corner? Yeah, I want to go with you. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> he was so insistent that we went ahead and put the mattress in so that he could sleep on it. It is easy to get an early start when you have a three-year-old telling you it's wake-up time and he would love you if you built his bed. The next morning, I started off by building the ladder, which is made up of simple two by fours. After cutting the pieces to length, each one got a few pocket holes so that they could be attached to the main board. Since these steps will be in contact with those little feet, I would recommend using a router and a roundover to soften the top edges. Or if you're like me and didn't have one, then use a sander to do the same. I used wood glue on all of the ends of the pieces before attaching with screws. And a good way to think about when to use glue and when not is the components that make up the larger assembly typically get glue, such as the rung on the ladder. But I would skip the glue when attaching the ladder to the bed frame so that in the future it can be removed if needed. Okay, we are making some progress and ready to move on to making and attaching the shelves for both the lower and upper beds. So I first moved the entire bed up against the wall as these shelves attach directly to the wall in between the two sides. These are definitely an add-on, so they are easily left off, but I like them because they bring a ton of function to the otherwise unused space. I started off by drilling a few pocket holes in the bottom of each long shelf. Next, I attached the vertical boards to make the three individual areas of the shelving unit. Before adding the shelves though, I decided to add in some of the railing needed on the top bunk. While mattresses have a standard length and width you can get offline, the height of a mattress does vary. So I would recommend getting that dimension before you place your railings. You want them to be high enough over the mattress to of course capture a rolling child. Now, if you put in the second mattress, you'll have a comfy platform to sit on while installing the shelves. I first went through and marked off the stud locations, then attached the slats. After placing one screw, I would use a level to make sure it was going on straight and then attach the rest in the same manner. Thank you, mom, for cleaning my lens while I'm recording. <laughs> After getting the backer boards attached, now the shelving unit we built before can be added. These are simple to be attached since all the pocket holes are already drilled and the unit can be lined up to the back boards. And of course, the shelf sizes can easily be changed. I just thought this arrangement looked nice. Okay, a little touch up paint and then to the top bunk to repeat. Before getting to the really cool add-ons, let me go ahead and talk about this video sponsor, which is Vessi. Vessi is a company that makes a 100% waterproof knit sneaker that you can wear through any weather and keep your toes dry. In 2017, the founders got sick of rainy weather and wet feet in their hometown of Vancouver and created a totally waterproof everyday sneaker. I wear boots in my shop, but at the end of the day and on weekends, I like to wear a more lightweight shoe. So when Vessi sent me the lightest waterproof sneaker in the world, I knew I found something great. Even though they keep the water out, they're breathable as the patent material lets the sweat and heat escape. Vessi uses a diametric material, which is also the first dual climate material. It regulates temperature so that in the winter, your feet are warm, but in the summer, heat escapes. They also have a grip for all weather, which is designed to provide traction, whether you're like me and trekking out to let your chickens out or you're caught up in a storm. I'm thrilled to have a shoe that's not a work boot, yet keeps my feet dry and gets me around on my property or even running errands. If you're ready to experience the world's first 100% waterproof knit shoe, then you can visit vessifootwear.com slash April and get 15% off your first order. Big thank you to Vessi for supporting what I do. I still had about half a day before having to catch a plane, so I decided to add in a few additions to increase the function for the parents, but also a little bit of fun for the kids. When I think of little kids in beds, I think of books, so I made sure to incorporate a built-in bookshelf to utilize some otherwise dead space. I started off by cutting to size and attaching some little standoffs to the front portion of the bed. I couldn't use screws to attach these, so instead I used a really powerful type on adhesive. I applied some to the back of all of the blocks, then held it in place with clamps for a few minutes to dry while I went outside and ripped a few more needed boards to length and width. Two boards can be added to the standoffs to create railings that will later prevent the books from being able to fall forward. 
easy enough, huh? It doesn't hold as much as a bookshelf, but you can at least place the children's favorites within reach. I'm gonna go ahead and apologize right now for the upcoming footage. I didn't have a lot of lighting and it was a really difficult shot to get my tripod here, but you'll still see how next I built a really fun rock wall on the side of the bed. I originally thought to add a solid sheet of plywood and paint some cool design on it, but I didn't like the idea of cutting off visibility completely to the bottom bunk for my brother and sister-in-law. So I added in some slats instead. This still gives me a plenty of surface area to next attach the hand and foot holds that will make up that rock climbing wall, but also leaves some visibility so that they can peek in from the door and put eyes on their boys. And it probably won't surprise anybody that this was Noah's favorite feature. Once he realized what this was, all he did was go up the rock wall, then down the ladder just to go back up the rock wall. All right, and then the last feature I tried to include was adding drawers to the bottom of the bunk bed. There is so much wasted space here that drawers are perfect. I did some simple drawer assembly using Quick and Thick and a brad nailer. Since my brother has carpet in the room, the drawers don't have casters on them, but rather will slide on top of the carpet. If you have tile or hardwood, then shortening the drawers is simply an adjustment so that you can add casters. I was really pushing my limits on needing to get to the airport, so I wasn't able to put handles on the drawers, and there is some touch-up paint needed, but my brother can handle that. All in all, I don't think that is bad for two and a half days worth of work. Not only that, but I love how involved the entire family was, especially Noah. I had no idea that a three-year-old could be so involved in such a build. Two more screws. Two. Okay. And then will get one more two screws. One more two screws. Here, Noah. Put these screws in those holes. When you sign down. Let me do it. Okay. If a bunk bed is on your to-do list, and I really hope that this video has helped you out. Again, it's a big build, but it's a simple one. I personally love how you can build it and they're gonna get so much use out of it for years. If you would like a set of plans and know that I have it over on my website, they come with materialist, a cut list, and all of the dimensions I used. If you have any questions about what I use, then please check the description and I'll see you in my next project. There you go, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to put it on the letter first. Yes, tomorrow. But no, you do it till now. No, I don't do it now. Yeah. I go to bed now. No. Yes. You do it now. You do it now. You want to put this bed up there? Yep, I want to put that bed up there. You think you can fit me up there? I think I can fit you up there just fine. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's that's funny. That is funny. But I know, but I know it's funny. You do? Yeah. I don't need to tell you. Yeah. <sighs> oh, it's tiring, isn't it? That's tired. You want to climb your rock wall? Sure. Okay.